How are you guys doing? What's, what is the, uh, the role of the nickel in this defense, and why is Gunnar Maldonado a good choice for that spot? Well, in college football, you see a lot of 11 personnel, which is your three wide receivers, your one tight end, your one back. And um, you want to get your skilled players on the field. Um, in this scheme, we blitz and play more zone, so you get more of a safety type. In the NFL, the nickel is more of a corner because you want to play more man uh, in most cases in your nickel defenses. So really, he's a scheme fit. He and uh, J.Y., um, because we want more safety slash uh, nickel types versus corner slash nickel types. For guys like Ephesians and Takario, what makes them ideal cornerbacks that you want to coach? They're long. They're long. Um, when you play the majority of your man, man coverage, you like longer guys because you want to play a lot of press coverage versus your shorter arm guys. So just their length. You like guys uh, with length. Uh, that can play press coverage. How important is it for them to stay ready to be, to be able to go out there? Yeah, you know, it's it's not like pro football where you can just get guys off the street. College football, you have what you have, so you have to develop all the guys that you're that you're dealing with. In terms of Takario, what immediately stands out about the Light on his feet. That was one thing that was very attractive when I went to watch him play live. You see it on tape a little bit, but when I saw him play live, a big guy like that that's light on his feet with good ball skills and good athletic ability, you know, those are some of the intangibles that attracted me to him. He grows and seem to be a guy that really has that height, but what, what about his ball skills? Uh, very good ball skills. You know, guys like him, sometimes you worry about their – are they twitchy enough? But again, for a guy that's 6'3", that can move around like a 6'1 guy, you know, those guys are rare to find. How much taller has he gotten since you started recruiting? <sighs> well, I mean, he was always tall. Um, I mean, if you want to say maybe an inch, but he was always pretty long and pretty tall. Um, when camp started, Isaiah Rutherford wasn't a starter. He's been in there lately. Do you view him as yeah, no question. I always tell those guys, C. Rowe, Stooks, and Rudd, hey, we have three starters. Um, so he's a guy that can step in and, uh, you know, keep our standard that we're looking for at that position. Um, as someone who's you know, been part of programs that have tried to rebuild and have gone through that process, what do you make of the job that Jed and the front office have done in just changing this roster? so dramatically over the last? I mean, it's night and day. It's night and day from the enthusiasm, the money that he's raised, the recruiting, um, what he's done, what we've done in this short amount of time of just trying to put the pieces together. I think he's done a great job. What can you tell us about uh, trade-off? you expect him to be out for a while? Yeah, I think he's going to be out for a little while. So the main thing with him, I told him, look, attack rehab. Attack rehab like he attacked practice, and then we'll just see where it goes. Well, Rutherford, obviously, uh, Ephesians, Mays will be back next week, so that'll be good for Mays to get back in and get reps. So, again, we just want to try to develop all the guys that we do have because you never know when you're going to need them. Okay. Can you talk about the energy this camp compared to last year? It's unbelievable. Uh, it starts the second we step into the building, and it just carries on all through the day and all through the night. So, again, college football is a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of energy, and I think uh, our coaching staff and Jed, our, our strength staff, we've really focused on trying to generate that type of energy and enthusiasm. I think, honestly, I think the enthusiasm and the energy that, you know, we're creating inside the building on the practice field and it's allowing our guys to play faster and to play with more energy. Do you expect a lot more interceptions this season than last season? You guys only had four. I hope so. I hope so. That's, that's always the plan. I hope so. Hey, trust me, I'm praying because uh, we need takeaways. It's just competition. We're going to win some, we're going to lose some. So you, 
my whole deal, let's go, 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 and then let's watch the tape and correct it. Let's go, 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 let's watch the tape. So it's just competition. We talked in spring about how going against Zero would benefit T-Mac. What mm -hmm. about the other way around? How does going against T-Mac maybe benefit Zero? Oh, yeah, I say, hey, man, don't let this little young freshman beat you. That's not a good thing. So just try to keep him on his toes. And, and T-Mac is a, is a really good player to be a freshman. So I said, hey, who's the veteran and who's the rookie? So just always try to keep Ciro on his toes. That's our time. All right, Great thank you, guys.